So John Herschel was the inventor of the photographic process known today as blueprint reading. To me, it's kind of interesting that, I mean, when was the last time you actually saw a set of blueprints? I mean, they haven't been blue since the 40s, probably. Uh, and it's just kind of interesting to know where they came from. He developed the chemical process of photographing the drawing, and when it was photographed, everything that had black lines to it actually came up white and the background came up blue. So th that's where the term blueprint comes from. And that was used up until about the 50s. Uh, then when we started getting in copying machines and that type of thing, uh, that took over. So it's all about communication. Um, the blueprints, you know, but we don't communicate with just the blueprints uh, when we're building something or doing a renovation or a project. It, it's now a whole pile of uh, documents. It's the blueprints, it's shop drawings, it's contracts, it's specifications. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen ours, but we do the drawings, we do specifications, we do bid sheets. Uh, you know, we have other aspects of the whole project. And as boring as it sounds to really get into it and understand it, you really have to go through it all. You know, it's not just understanding the blueprints, it's understanding the specs and the bid sheets uh, and all the contracts. Because again, you know, that's where the problems come up with a project when all those don't come together in the right manner. Um, and, you know, when I was in college, you know, they used to say that uh, physics, you know, math is the language of physics. Well, you know, blueprint reading is really the language of construction. And, and in order to really know what you're doing and get involved with a project well, you really do need to know how to read a set of blueprints pretty well. And that's what we'll do today. We'll go through and hopefully help you out so you can feel pretty comfortable opening up regardless of the size of the print. So they provide information on codes, um, spatial design, size, volume, window sizes, doors, we all know that obviously, the material types and the details and not always but hopefully the methods on how to put something together. And those methods are sometimes where the plans get a little bit muddy. So the blueprints usually contain these items, a cover sheet, architectural sheets, and we'll go through what the architectural sheets are, structural sheets, mechanicals, uh, Sometimes it's referred to as MEP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing sheets, and then the details. And that typically makes up a set of drawings uh, like this. This happens to be a clubhouse for toll. But you, you can see, you know, you might pick this up and go, wow, you know, there's a lot here. But when you break it down, it's really not as complicated as it might seem at first. So those are typically all on the set of drawings, and they'll typically all be on the front page, on the cover sheet, uh, where we can, well, we'll see how they go, or where everything is located within the drawings. 